Here are some ways to make your short court warm up more meaningful. When we get out there, if we actually have a focus in mind, we can improve our game even in the short court warm up. So I'm gonna show you some examples of different things that you can do. So rather than just getting out here and just hitting the ball back and forth like this, not really moving my feet, not using great technique, I can actually give myself a goal. And so say my goal is to improve my slices. Now both of us are trying to slice the ball and apply backspin to it. So we're actually working on something while we're up here. This is also a really good way to work on your control because oftentimes if players warm up from the short court and they're not putting spin on the ball, they end up hitting it way too far and the rally quality goes down. So on both sides, we're seeing how much backspin we can put on the ball. And then notice that we're both doing a little split step. So not only are we warming up our slices, but we're warming up our feet. Then notice that we're also doing a split step every time when our partner's about to hit the ball. So we're warming up our feet in addition to warming up a specific shot or improving that specific shot. Next, we'll go with wide angle slices. So we're working on hitting the ball at an angle to our partner. So a specific target is our focus now. If I wanna get a little more active with my feet, I can move after I hit and then move back to the ball. So I'm practicing more of a running ball. Then we can switch sides. So we go the opposite angle, same thing. Players often skip the short court warm up because they don't find a lot of value in it. But if you start doing things like this, you can really get a lot of benefit from that short court warm up. And I feel pretty tired just after two minutes of doing this because I'm working hard on every shot rather than just standing there tapping the ball back and forth. Another area that's important for spec tennis is being able to hit touch volleys. So I could just have my partner stand back a few steps. I stand pretty close and I'm just trying to hit a nice touch volley every time that's landing in front of her so that I get used to the feel required to hit that ball softly. Playing around with how tight I need to grip the racket, how much swing I need to do, how to position my feet so that I'm in a pretty good spot to hit it. And then we can switch roles. So she comes up and tries touch volleys and I'm just trying to play a nice cooperative ball back to her. Next we'll go volley to half volley. So I'm gonna stand closer to the net. I'm taking everything as a volley. And my goal is to put it right next to her feet so that she has to play a half volley. I'm trying not to hit too hard so that she can have some success. But if I can hit my target, I'm really forcing her to play a half volley which is a good skill, especially when you're transitioning to the net. Nice. And then same thing if we switch roles, I'm standing back a little bit, trying to play half volleys. She's trying to put the ball right at my feet. And then we can do some volley to volley to really work on our reflexes and also our coverage with our backhand volley. Against good players, they're often going to make you play a backhand volley especially if they hit it right at you. So it's really good to get used to protecting with the backhand all the way across. Notice we're still doing our split step. So the intensity level is pretty high. I don't have a lot of time to move and so I'm playing a lot of backhand volleys. Getting a lot of reps in a very short amount of time when you do this, 